In this lesson, we'll discuss several smart new tools designed to streamline your workflow in Vray Next for SketchUp. The new auto exposure and auto white balance settings will get you faster previews of your scene with less hassle. Meanwhile, the new adaptive dome light will reduce your setup and has the capability to automatically increase your render speed up to seven times depending on the scene. Together, these smart new tools will empower you with more time to focus on the artistic aspects of creating your designs. To get started, let's take a look at our scene here and see how we can use the new auto exposure parameter to improve our renders. If we open up the asset editor and head to the lights tab, you'll see that currently the scene is lit by the V-Ray Sun and Sky system. We also have two background planes here on the left, each with assigned emissive materials with textures for their color. Now over in the settings tab, you'll see that for this lesson, We'll use the Material Override with a generic gray override color and also leave the default V-Ray denoiser turned on. All right, to prepare our scene for rendering, let's create a V-Ray dome light and place it in the scene here. Next, I'm gonna drop down the Environment tab and right-click on the background texture swatch to copy the sky texture from it. Then, let's head over to the dome light parameters and in the color texture swatch, I'll right-click to paste the sky as a copy. Rendering the sky with the dome light will significantly increase the render speed because of the dome light's brand new adaptive algorithm, which should be enabled by default. When this is checked, the dome light uses the smart new adaptive sampling algorithm built into V-Ray Next, which uses the light cache phase to selectively sample only the important areas of the render. As a result, the adaptive dome light now renders up to seven times faster automatically. It also removes the need for using portal lights to light your interior spaces saving you time during setup as well. Now, let's switch to the render camera and do a render of our scene here. The first thing you'll likely notice is that the render looks underexposed, and it also has a strong bluish tint, especially near the windows. This is because we haven't set any camera parameters yet. In past versions of V-Ray, a common solution here would be to tweak the camera parameters manually using the advanced camera settings. However, this can be a very time-consuming process, so let's see how we can use V-Ray Next to achieve a desirable result more easily. In the camera settings dropdown, you'll see across from the exposure value parameter that there is a new auto button toggle. Enabling this will turn on the automatic exposure setting, which will let V-Ray calculate the correct exposure for you with just the click of a button and no need for manual tweaking. Now let's render the scene again. Note that in order to use the auto exposure and white balance features, you'll need to render in production mode for now. As you can see, the image looks a lot better now in terms of lighting and contrast. It has proper exposure and all the interior details are clearly visible. Also, we have the ability to additionally compensate and adjust the auto exposure value results using the new compensation slider. To demonstrate what this can do, I'll set the compensation value to one and then let's draw a render region on the left and start another render. As you can see, a value of one makes the result twice as bright. Naturally, when the compensation value is set to negative one, it makes the exposure twice as dark, which I'll demonstrate using another render region here on the right. The compensation parameter is only enabled when the exposure mode is set to automatic, allowing you to still maintain some control over the results without needing to tweak each camera setting manually. Okay, let's return the compensation slider to zero and remove the render region. Now that you've seen how we can quickly get the correct exposure, let's explore how we can get rid of the bluish tint in the image. Across from the white balance, we just need to toggle on the new auto button as well, and let's render the scene again to see how that affects our result. Keep in mind that in order to benefit from the auto exposure and auto white balance features, the production rendering mode and the light cache secondary GI solution have to be selected, as they are calculated during the light cache phase. All right, now everything looks as expected. The walls appear a neutral gray color, and the sun hotspots on the right represent the proper color of sunlight. With just a few clicks using the new auto exposure and auto white balance features, we now have much better lighting and contrast in our scene in a fraction of the time it would take to set it up manually. Now that we have the proper exposure and color balance, let's focus on trying out some different lighting scenarios without having to adjust any camera parameters. In the Lights tab, 
let's turn off the sun and then replace the sky texture in the dome lights color texture swatch. This time, I'm going to load in a bitmap HDRI called HDRI01, which is provided in the asset folder of this lesson. In the texture placement dropdown, I'm also going to change the horizontal rotation to 110 degrees, as I have found this angle catches the shadows nicely. Next, going back up in the hierarchy, we need to change the shape of the dome light to sphere so that the projection of the HDRI goes below the horizon. Then, let's also head to the layers tray and turn off the background planes layer so that the ground in the HDR image will now be visible through the window as well. Okay, now we're ready to render the scene using an HDRI with the adaptive dome light. All right, I'm liking how this has turned out. As you can see, the scene has an entirely different look and feel using an HDRI with the dome light, yet it still maintains proper exposure and white balance. In addition, the new adaptive sampling algorithm makes it so that you can get the proper lighting at faster speeds than ever before. Now let's try out another HDRI texture in the dome light's color texture swatch. This time, I'm going to load in a bitmap called HDRI02 from the assets folder. And let's rotate it 60 degrees horizontally. Also, this time let's disable the material override toggle in the settings so that we can see the final material supplied in the scene. Now let's do another render. This time, you'll see that the lighting results are distinctively different than our previous render with the first HDRI, which demonstrates how switching between HDRIs and playing with their rotation can create wildly different lighting scenarios for you to explore in your scenes. Okay, as you have now seen, the smart new adaptive dome light, automatic exposure, and auto white balance settings offer nearly limitless possibilities for creating and testing out different lighting scenarios quickly. And, by removing the need for manually setting up additional lights and tweaking parameters, you'll be able to devote more time and energy to unleashing your creative potential while letting V-Ray handle the rest.